Hello and welcome to the Master's Voice. You're with Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. Today I have an urgent and immediate word from the Lord. I published this word to my blog, I think just two days ago, October 29th, 2020. Some of you may have seen the prophecy already. It is a very grave and a serious prophecy. And to be honest, it, um, it was taxing for me, and I'm sure that it is no doubt equally as taxing for you to read, understand. Nevertheless, this is the word the Lord gave me. These are the things he said. These are the things he showed me. And I attest that these are the things I saw. I recorded them as best I could, and now I go straight to share the word. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out to the Lord without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Silah, you hold my eyelids open I am so troubled, I cannot speak. Psalm 77, verses 1 to 4. This word is dated October 29th, 2020, and the title of this prophecy is Blood to Drink. So I will go immediately into um, explaining and sharing what this experience, this vision was like for me. The night before October 28th, I, I really had a good time with the Lord. You know, I make it a habit to study my, my Bible as the last thing before I go to sleep. So I, I don't accept texts. I don't check emails or any of my ministry platforms from a certain hour around 11 o'clock. Um, I set that time aside for me. I'm a bit of, a, of an evening person. I actually like to be up at night. So studying the word is when the house is quiet and there's no movement and I can just have my peace. So I, I was studying the word of God. I was fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And um, I'll, I'll just be open and I'll say that it was a particularly close time. I really, I was all smiles. I was happy. I was really experiencing um, the nearness of God as a father and his child. And when I finally closed my Bible and went to sleep, I, I have to say that my heart was extremely content. I had this contentment that you can only get when you have um, close fellowship with such a precious person as the Lord. So I fell asleep and I knew nothing else about it until the Lord, um, I'll just say, came upon me. The Lord came upon me in, in the middle of the night. I don't know what time it was. I think I slept maybe a few minutes after 1 a.m., but um, in, in the dead of night, the Lord came upon me and it, it was so different. It was just so different. Even when I'm asleep, um, if, if he wills it, I can be aware of what is going on around me in my room. I can be aware of what I'm doing, but I'm sleeping. So I don't know if I see a picture of me doing these things or if I'm just doing it and recording it and remembering it later because sometimes that happens. But the Lord came upon me, brothers and sisters, and uh, it was a completely different person from the person that I had spent time with the night before. And I think that's why I was at pains to make that known in the written prophecy. It was such a shock to me because in human relations, if someone is happy with you, um, at, at, at 9 a.m. Or, or, or midnight, and you happen to meet that person at 4 or 5 a.m., the assumption is that as you saw them, so they will be. But God was very different. He came upon me in a completely different way. And I, I, I could only think of when Abraham, uh, when, when Abraham kept longing for the promise, kept saying, you know, he didn't complain before the Lord, but it was a hunger in him to have this child. And God could see that this man just needed something to hold on to because he had been waiting for so long. So the Lord told Abraham, go and, you know, cut a heifer in half and also cut a goat or, and then also cut 
um, some birds. And basically he, he made Abraham present to him all the different stages of, of animal that would later be required in Levitical proceedings to make an offering to God. So a heifer or, or a cow, a bull, is the biggest that people who can afford it would offer. And then you could offer a goat or a young kid, which is, you know, a young kid or a sheep, you know, from the middle animals. And then if you were really poor, you could bring uh, turtle doves. In the, in the King James, is just referred to as turtles, but it's not actual turtles. It's the turtle dove. If you were poor, you had to bring two turtle doves, and that would be your sacrifice. But the rule back then was, let none appear before me empty. So even if you were poor, you had to find a way to take your Levitical sacrifice when you were going to have your sins atoned for. So he made Abraham present before him all the different stages of animals. And the Bible says that Abraham cut the animals in half and positioned them half here, half here, and then half there, half there, and then the doves at the end. And then it says that Abraham sat down, not knowing what God intended. It says that he sat down and he was watching over his, watching over his sacrifice and waiting to see what would happen next. So this old man is sitting there, and then the Bible says that God put Abraham into a deep sleep. So all of a sudden, Abraham just passes out and goes into a deep sleep, but this is a different kind of sleep. It's not just the kind of sleep that we as humans sleep in to have rest. There is a kind of sleep that God can bring upon you in the prophetic, in which he will show you things, and you will be stuck there. You cannot come out because you are not in control of this sleep. Not that we're in control of any type of sleep, but this sleep will hold you fast. It is like, this sleep that was on me was like a bog. It was like a swamp. I was tossing and turning and trying to, to shake myself out of it, and I could not. And in that vision, the Lord was angry. I'm not going to pretend. There are too many people in this nation who rob God of the right to be angry. Personally, I think it is so rude and I think it is so presumptuous that you, a human being who gets angry when people cut you off in traffic, angry when your boss speaks to you in a way he shouldn't, angry when you get shortchanged at the store, angry when you can't have your way, or angry when someone actually does you wrong, a rightful wrong. You have the right. You get angry. But somehow, Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit, and the Heavenly Father, God, are the only people that are robbed of the right, especially here in America, I don't know what people do elsewhere, to be angry. God is not angry with America, you hear all the time. God would never do that. Everybody is Jesus's PA and therefore so close to him that they know what he would and wouldn't do. He is not allowed to express himself he is not allowed to say what he really thinks or really feels because before he can even open his mouth to get a word in edgewise, a loving God wouldn't do that, people say. We talk about hectic sins that are devouring this nation, evil abominations that are being encased in law. A loving God wouldn't do that. God is love. In America, God has become this one-dimensional Santa, a joke. He is relegated to the room of love. He has to love. He can't be angry. He cannot be upset. He cannot bring judgment. He cannot bring strong remonstrations, which is reproach and rebuke and the pointing of the finger, not God. He doesn't have the right. And so I say to many people, if you find in your life that you are not actually being updated by the Holy Spirit on what things will come. Just understand that you're not close to God. You're not as close to him as you think. Because the Bible says that surely the Lord does nothing until he reveals his secrets to his friends. Yes, the prophets are his friends, but so is every believer. And in a true friendship, both parties get to speak. If I'm friends with you and you're always talking at me and I can't say anything, or I'm aware that you have so much fragility inside that I can't actually tell you when I'm upset, when I'm not happy with your behavior, or when you do things that offend me, that's not a real friendship. It's one dimensional. I am the mirror and you are the real friend. You simply come to the mirror and command the mirror to show you your own face. 
This is why a lot of us do not believe or do not even know that judgment is coming upon this nation. This is why we're offended. This is why we get upset with people like Celestial who dare to come on the internet and say that God is angry. Well, God came to me and God let his heart be known. And he was angry and he was scary, even for me. And I could not escape that sleep. And I'm going to share now the things that the Lord revealed in that sleep. I saw the guilt of America. I saw the crimes that I constantly share on my blog, but I saw some things that I've never seen before and I did not hold back in sharing what I saw. In my sleep, I began to cry out to the Lord and say, please, Lord, please don't give us that. Please don't give them that to drink. Please, Lord, we're human beings. Don't do that. We can't drink that. And I could not see what it is that I was speaking about, but I was strongly begging the Lord, please, please, God, please don't give us that. After a while of saying this and tossing and turning, I managed, I managed to wake up. I don't even think that I woke myself up. I think that the Lord simply let me go. And I woke up, I sat up and all those feelings of dread and horror and the terrible pressure that I was feeling, I was feeling so much pressure. I shared with people that God is a consuming fire. God is many things, but I like to run with the consuming fire version because this is what the man says about himself. And when Moses was asking God at one other point and saying, God, oh, let me see your glory. God made it clear to Moses that the mortal man cannot look upon what he is. Whatever it is that the father is, though he speaks of himself in human terms, he mentions that he, he has an eye. He mentions that he has a mouth. He will spit the unbelievers and the lukewarm Christians out of his mouth. He mentions that he has a strong right hand. And with that strong right hand, he is mighty to save. He mentions that he has ears and that his ears are not closed to those who pray to God. He mentions human attributes about himself, but at the same time, God is not a human being at all. He is something that none of us will understand fully until we stand before him. And because of that, the Lord veils himself. The Lord veils himself from us. God does not fully reveal everything that he is to us because we would be torched. We would be burnt up. His holiness and the power that is God cannot be tolerated by this flesh. So a lot of the times when you spend time with God and you get that warm feeling like, oh, God loves me, or you go to a conference and the anointing is there, the power of God is there. And you see people sometimes just falling in their seats under the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit being shown to us. Imagine if God has layers, imagine when God begins to take away some of those layers and reveal himself to us. Brothers and sisters, according to the emotion that God is bringing forth, it can be very oppressive. It can feel as if the heavens are pressing down on you and you just cannot. That's how I was. But when I woke up, all of this was gone. I was just a little groggy, a little disoriented, but I didn't feel any of the things that I had felt just a moment before. And so I, I thought, oh, that was horrible. But then being sleepy, I went back to sleep. And this time, God didn't let me go. I went back to saying, God, no, please don't feed them that. God have mercy, Father, they cannot drink that. They are people. Please don't feed them that. And this time I saw what I was crying out about. I saw a chalice. I wrote cup, um, but I, I spend a lot of time, you know, I, I like words. I, I, I like English. You know, it's the only thing I speak. So uh, it was a chalice and a chalice is a very big cup. And I had seen this cup once before in another. Um, it's part of the the America in, in slave. America in Chains uh, prophecy series is called the Slavery Chronicles. And I think the Slavery Chronicles part three in that vision, I saw a huge cup, so huge, but I'm not here to talk about it at that time. At that time, what I saw in that cup seemed to be a fiery 
burning acid liquid. This cup that I saw last night or on the night of the 28th into the 29th was another cup. It was a very wide bowl type uh, metal stem, dirty, dirty, either dirty silver or pewter, which is another type of metal that is much, much cheaper than silver, but looks the same. It was a pewter cup, uh, tarnished, dirty on the outside, smudged, and inside was just so much blood. It was thick, liquid, black, disgusting blood. And not only that, there were lumps in this thing, um, lumps of flesh, uh, lumps of children. I saw uh, pieces of the babies that have been aborted in this country and I knew instantly looking that it was them. You know, when children are very small, their hands have not finished forming and they have this little webby, webby. So I saw their little hands in their little parts. I saw, I'm going to keep it real on this broadcast. God says something to me often. Sometimes I say to him, Lord, I'm a woman. Why do you show me this? And he just says to me, if I have to see it, why can't you? And when I think about it, I think that's fair. Sometimes people feel sorry for me and they say, oh, you know, I'm so sorry what you go through and I'm so sorry what you have to see. And I could say yes, but at the same time, I love the Lord. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but goodness gracious, God is the treasure of my existence. I'm here for him. I love him. And when you're in friendship with somebody and they're going through something, you can be right there with them. You, may not, you might not be able to understand it all. In no way do I claim that I can understand God's emotions, the complexity of him. If we look at the solar system, if we look at the stars, how can I claim to um, understand someone like that? But I love him. And so if he says to me, this is what he endures, why can't I? I don't have an answer for that. So in this cup, keeping it real, was thick, black, disgusting blood. There was, there was plasma in there, right? Sort of like just, it was slimy. There were bits of children in there. There were clots, the kind of clots that come out of women when they are on their menses. There were just flesh. There was feces, poop. There was poop in the cup. I looked at it and I, I just couldn't. There was a disembodied hand. So there was a hand in these old robes. You know, the robes that they always show us of Moses and, and the ancient people is hand coming out of an old robe and the hand was extending this cup to me and my soul just adamantly went, never, never will I drink that, never. And I understood that this was the cup of retribution that has been prepared for the United States. Retribution means to pay back. Retribution is the process whereby without the offending party knowing it, another party has been keeping note of their crimes. You see, retribution is very different from revenge. If you do something, let's say you rob someone, a person can revenge against you in many different ways. They can come and they can beat you up. They could expose you on the news and bring you to shame, you know, that way. Revenge is a sudden, unplanned thing. Revenge can be planned, yes. But most of the time, it is anger and powerful emotion that simply moves you into the process of revenge. Retribution is a different type of revenge or punishment. The word retribution carries with it the connotations that someone has been taking notes so that as you offend, as you do wrong things, it hasn't just been flying to the wind. No, no. Someone has taken careful notice of all that you have done and now will repay you with exactitude 
according to what you did. So if what you did can be measured and seen as 100 billion point three six six one kilotons, your retribution will come back to you as 100 billion point three six six one kilotons. Not a kiloton less and not a kiloton more. Whatever it is that you are guilty of, you will receive with exactitude, which means measured out perfectly. So the cup that was prepared contained murder, abortion, sodomy, which is the act of penetrating someone's anus with a sexual organ, a male sexual organ, or an object, homosexual acts, and sex that is had when women are on their period. These habits, brothers and sisters, there are many people who commit these things when they are out in the world. They don't know. A lot of people don't understand that many of the things that they do in sexual intimacy come from the doctrines of demons. Sex is given to us as a gift from God. It's not for everybody, it's for the married. Sex is the present that God gives a couple. When everybody else is giving you a coffee maker and a toaster, your heavenly father is sitting there going, wait until they open my gift. That's the intent. But it's not meant to be turned into a twisted thing because it is a very powerful spiritual act. Therefore, when you bring demonic activities into it, when you bring perversion into it, such as two men being intimate, two women being into it, intimate, you break the gate. You break the power of the act. You take the act given to you by God and hand it over to Satan. This is the reason why God continues to accuse the United States of adultery. Adultery is when you already have a spouse and then you go and you do intimate things with someone else who's not your spouse. When you take the intimate and powerful things of God and you mix them with perversion, you mix them with abominations, and then you hand it over to Satan, you're guilty not only of those acts in and of themselves, you're also guilty of adultery before the Lord against the statutes and against what he has said. So this is, these are all the things that were mixed in that cup. And the Lord extended it to me and I began to cry. I began to cry in my sleep and I said, Lord, please, this cannot be taken by human beings. If this cup is drunk, it will destroy the human being. The Lord's reply can be found in Ezekiel 35 verse 6. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will prepare you for blood, and blood shall pursue you. Since you have not hated blood, therefore blood shall pursue you. The Lord said that this is the cup of dreadfulness that will come upon the USA, the cup of anger, of recompense, and retribution against a people so deadly that the only fair punishment for them is to mix up their sins together and feed it back to them. Imagine being a nation that God calls deadly. This is what they have done and this is what they will receive. For the unborn that they shredded on the table, for the sodomy they committed, and their hateful acts of perversion, for the bloodshed of anal intercourse and the waste from their bodies, all these have filled this cup. For the stench of war, for the blood screams and the rape of innocence that appeased the lust of soldiers far from home, it has filled this cup. For the stench of premeditated and unplanned murder, all has flowed into this cup. I will give them blood to drink. They shall be eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood in their turn. Please bear with me if this video is long. I absolutely refuse to do a part two. I do not want to come back to this to this particular word. So say to America, you are an abomination before me and it is time to remove you from my face forever. You shall no longer be a nation. You will not be a country. You will become a footnote in history and the future generations will wonder about you like other past civilizations and say, 
Where did she go? That's what will happen to you. You are a lost people and soon you will be a lost nation. So the cup kept being extended to me throughout this thing and I really wept. I said to myself, I'm never drinking that. And I heard a voice say to me, the righteous will not taste of this judgment. The righteous will not see the bitter cup. This is the cup of my anger against America. But those who have no part in her atrocities shall not taste of it. But I was not comforted when I heard this. I didn't become peaceful and say, oh, well, you know, there's hope, you know, if we're righteous. No, I still wasn't happy because I, I, I had pain and I had so much remorse for the people that you can't talk to in this generation. People who already are coming to these videos and um, thumbing it down and doing whatever it is that the Internet gives them power to do. I felt sorrow for people who think that having their sins spoken of is judgment. Brothers and sisters, you don't know what judgment is. Someone telling you, I don't think you should be doing that. That's desecrating your garment. That's offensive to God. That's not judgment. That's somebody actually showing you love. That's somebody pointing things out to you so that you will not get destroyed when God comes to judge all sin. Judgment is this thing that I saw. So the first thing that God showed me after I saw the cup is that God said that insanity will be the result of being forced to drink this cup. I'm not saying that a physical cup will come down from the sky in front of you full of blood and you will have to drink it. This cup is called the bitter cup. And when the bitter cup comes to a nation, it will come to the nation through things, activities, and events that will happen in that nation to cause the outcome that the Holy Spirit is revealing here. So I saw the bitter cup come to America and God said that Americans will change. They'll be beastly. They will be animal-like, feral. The word feral literally means to be like a wild beast, especially a wolf. That word is usually used to describe wolves. The Lord said that people will turn on one another and destroy one another and they will lose all the moral sensitivities that make us who we are, kind, loving, generous, understanding, empathetic, and just peaceful towards one another. We will lose, people who drink this bitter cup will lose the ability to have these things as part of their human nature. And in fact, their human nature will change. So I saw the cup was forced on a man forced on people in the streets. I saw them crying out in agony and holding their heads like, ah, you know, when the superheroes are changing, when the superheroes are changing under their superpower or whatever it is, they, they, they do this and they go down on their knees. And then when they look up, they're different. So I saw that happening to people. They became very savage and beast-like and not like people at all. After that, the Lord showed me a human eye, very up close. I recently put up a prophecy on my blog that has the eye of a wolf. That's how close a human face came and I saw the eye. And then the iris, which was just normal brown, turned almost like the glittering colors of a fish scale. So you know how fish are usually silver and then when they're in the sunlight, you see the yellows, the greens, the blues and purples on their scales. That's what happened to that eye. And when that eye changed, the soul of the person went from being a human soul to a beast-like, lion-like soul. I saw another eye that was also brown. It changed and it became gold, green, flecks of brown and hazel in there with the solid black ring around it. And that is exactly how the eyes of lions look. And I, I just felt terror because I knew that inside these people, they had changed from being human to something else. And they had lost the ability to reason and think as man. God said that this bitter cup will bring a madness upon the United States. Exactly how Nebuchadnezzar changed in the book of Daniel and became like a beast. So people will change. I saw people in the streets. I just saw quick scenes of people in the streets doing pandemonium, but this is not the pandemonium of a, of a riot. This is the kind of pandemonium of, of, of those movies, Purge Anarchy. I've never seen those movies because I don't watch horror movies, but I know just from seeing the trailers as they show in the movie house before your movie that people become crazy. They become uncontrollably violent and can even bite and tear at people in that stage. So, um, 
I, the next thing God showed me was people committing homosexuality to naked men right in front of me doing that. And I saw, please just go to the blog and I explained it. I just saw how it is when they do that, what their bodies produce. I saw a lady at her time of the month and a man was sleeping with her and the Lord brought it to a close up. I was very upset. Um, so I said that God is sinless and God has to see these things and, and, um, he has to see them without rest. The Lord says that because blood has been poured out before him, America takes part with witches. She eats at the table of witches. She partakes in human sacrifices and eats the flesh of children. You love to eat children so much that you even eat them raw in my presence. I will destroy you for this. Brothers and sisters, whether you believe it or not, people partake not only in human sacrifice in this nation, not only in rituals, flesh is eaten in this country. If you do not believe me, God bless you. Nevertheless, I have said it more than once in different prophecies. God has just never revealed it this bluntly. I saw a woman, blonde woman. She had two premature babies in each hand. She was eating from one to another, just the way you would imagine that someone with two apples or two pomegranates or anything would eat from one to another. It was blood running down her hands. This is not a metaphorical picture for all of you who like to come to videos and say it was a metaphor for savagery. It wasn't a metaphor for any such thing. She was consuming the babies because after the picture of her, I saw other people, rich men, bald men, bankers, wearing watches that would pay my rent for a year. People in high rise buildings with beautiful views of the city or wherever they were. Some of them were extremely high class and would not eat the baby like that. They were eating the baby with a fork and knife on a plate. Some of them had their babies cooked. Some of them had the babies raw, but there was this bloodlust in all of them and they were consuming these babies at a very high rate. Praise the Lord. The next thing the Lord moved to is the practice of Halloween. Personally, I do not understand the fascination with Halloween. It should be clear on its face that anything that is represented to you by a pumpkin with jagged teeth and hollow eyes where you dress up as witches, skeletons, and other things that represent the dark world is not something for Christians to partake of. I don't even know why this is an issue. I don't even know why this is a point of discussion. If we know what Satan did, does, and we have even an inkling of what the spiritual realm, where the demons, the devils, and also the agents of darkness, human agents of darkness that serve the devil willingly, that have covenanted with him and said, you be our Lord, you be our master. We will serve you with our lives, even to the point of giving our lives for you and what we believe. What makes us think as a society that getting together and singing songs on October the 31st is how you counter the kingdom of hell? Jesus has mentioned such things as when you fast, which means that it's not optional to fast. He has said, pray without ceasing. He has said, uh, speak in tongues and edify yourselves. Um, wear the full armor of God. Always be ready in and out of season. Contend earnestly for the faith. You are soldiers. What makes the soldiers of God think that if we hold alternatives to what is actually a high witchcraft mass, these people open portals and call their great grandfathers of demons or whoever they call through these portals to pour into the earth realm. They snatch people and make sacrifices of human blood. And yet the church thinks that by hosting trunk or treat, we will effectively break down the evil, the witchcraft and the death that is Halloween. America, you partake of the witch's feast. You dance at All Hallows' Eve. You paint yourself and take to the streets to celebrate the highest satanic festival on the calendar. You mock me, America. 
Your fornications with other gods are too great. Too great for me. I will judge you harshly. Your altars are hungry for blood. They cry out day and night before me. Give us blood. Give us blood to drink. Because you have fed these altars with the souls of children, with men, women, and children, I will give you blood to drink. You will be eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood in your turn. Now, as the Lord saw this, I saw these ancient scenes of secret priesthoods, secret brotherhoods, whatever. They were all wearing matching robes. And I saw them that they would capture people and tie people to poles. So they would tie people to poles and tie their hands behind their backs. And then they would cut those people at strategic points on their body. And then they would let the blood run down into bowls. So there was a person being bled to death and they were collecting the bowls. Uh, blood in different bowls and then they would go over to an altar and then they would lift up the bowl like ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, whatever they were saying and then they would pour out the blood in an ark upon these altars and then even though the altar looked just like a, a brick pizza oven even though it was just an altar of stone or wood or whatever it was I also saw that the altar had a personality and it lifted up its face and was like <sighs> And it would slurp down this blood greedily. Right after that, I saw the nation of America. I saw the United States map. And all over the map were these red flashpoints. There was not a single state that did not have a red flashpoint. And each red flashpoint was an altar. They appeared like red brick ovens. But then they also appeared like phone booths. And every single phone booth was ringing. Ring, ring, ring. Every altar was calling out for blood. Give us blood. We want blood. Give us blood to drink. And all these altars in America had the same big red tongue that the ancient altars had. And then I saw that America responded to the demand for blood. All over the nation, I saw people spreading out to go and find human sacrifices. They snatched men, women, children, especially children, stole them, bundled them up, tortured them, sexually assaulted them, and then sacrificed them to these altars. And I saw that as these altars in America were drinking and gulping down the blood of the sacrifices, the Lord put the picture of the old priesthoods and how they would get blood from their victims he superimposed that picture on top of the american map of america's altars being satisfied the lord said that any person who partakes in halloween anyone any church that even tries to do alternatives like trunk or treat or whatever madness that they do every year as an alternative for the kids the kids don't need to celebrate halloween the kids don't need to be a part of that tradition the kids don't need to sit at the table of Jesus Christ five days a week with you and then sit at the table of demons one day a week with the devil and you, their parent, facilitate them, drive them around to pick up candy from people who are poisoning your children. Do you really think that the witches have not prepared candies, trinkets, and gifts to put into your children's hands so that those children bring those things into the house? consume them, and also leave little markers in the house that that witch can then use to afflict your household. All of a sudden, you and your husband are fighting. All of a sudden, both of you are sexually tempted, but not to each other. You're not attracted to each other anymore. Now you want to have affairs outside the home. For the simple token or tr trinket that your child brings into the home, one night a year, you have opened your house to Satan and partaken with the witches. And then you want to go on Facebook and other social media and defend it and say celestial people like you and others are so religious. May God bless you in that pursuit. The final thing that the Lord said is that anyone who participate or sits at the tables of demons will be judged. So if you go to one of those churches that do that, may this be a warning to you. All who partake of Halloween festivities are supping with witches participating in a high mass of witchcraft. Therefore, when the lords and ladies of witchcraft are judged by the Lord, every invited guest who sat and covenanted with them, Halloween participators, you will be punished also. The last thing the Lord showed me was putrefaction in food. 
Basically put, ladies and gentlemen, I saw that the food in the United States is highly contaminated and it's not happening by accident. Accident, It's happening on purpose. I saw blood. I saw period blood. I saw feces, that is poop, human waste. I saw other substances that I will not mention. I saw mm, pubic hairs and trace elements of human flesh being put into the food. I said here in the post that you may not believe it, but I had no choice to believe it because I saw the huge metal containers, the metal storage containers that they use to contain the, the ground up beef that they put into burgers in this nation. I saw that the cow's meat was just a normal maroon. So after you grind, grind up cow and it sits for a while, it just basically turns maroon. That's simply the normal process of oxidation uh, when blood touches air for a period of time. But then I saw bright red fatty lumps, bright red fatty lumps that were slightly more damp and bloody and, and with pieces of fat attached to it, mixed in, and the, and the Lord made it known to me that that was human flesh. This channel handles serious matters. Serious matters that could potentially affect and harm my life. Serious matters that you are free to take to heart or ignore as you feel. However, I will be faithful to what God gives me and I will say what I saw. I saw that big chains, use your common sense. The Lord said big chains that are owned by a certain people group are guilty of this. And I saw that the effect of this was to produce great sickness in the population, high, high cancer rates, but also high percentages of mental diseases. I saw that people literally went crazy from eating that type of food. So the picture was that I saw people eating the food, eating the food, and then I saw the same thing, ah, and then the mind was affected. Memory loss, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, schizophrenia, and even the more murderous mental disorders like sociopathy and psychopathy. I saw America became a map before me and with a very high escalating percentage of these diseases when, when compared to the rest of the world. So the rest of the world was like this and America was like this, jagged. And the Lord said, it's the food. So these are the charges that the Lord has brought against the United States of America, her crimes and her sins. For these things, God has mixed America, what he called a most bitter cup. If you do not believe these things, brothers and sisters, that's okay. I think that at this point in time, each of us has to do what we need to do. So many people scream about judgment all the time. It is not judgment for someone to tell you the truth. Actually, the word judgment doesn't also mean punishment. Judgment is directly tied to discernment, which means you hear something and then you have to run it through the old processor here and just say, is this true? Could this be true or not? Wise people who truly are righteous Righteous doesn't mean self-righteous. Righteous actually means at peace with God the Father and not viewed as guilty by him for any sin. Righteous people take information to God in prayer. If you can't get an answer, sometimes in fasting, sometimes in seeking the scriptures, sometimes in seeking wise counsel. And this is how righteous people come to a clear and balanced judgment on what they hear. But to all who feel that their heart is the ultimate filter of truth, filter away. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Please check the description box below. The link to the prophecy will be there where you can read it in greater detail. You can see and assess these things for yourself. All the information is below. God bless you and thank you for bearing with me. Have a good one.